Hello everyone and welcome to a new video where I will be talking about uh, Flat Earth Dave or D-I-T-R-H's uh, apparent uh, opinion about real stars and what they really look like. Uh, before I do that, however, I would like to express my most heartfelt thanks to uh, all of you. I have never had as many views that I, as I has uh, as I had in the last two weeks. And somehow a lot of more people subscribed, like almost double what I had before, and I'm very thankful for that. I don't quite understand it, but I don't need to understand it, so that is fine. So let us have a look. I feel like the video is very loud, and I, I, I turned it down a little bit, I hope that this is okay now. I mean, I don't think that this is uh, an image of Arcturus. Well, I'm pretty certain it isn't an image of Arcturus. Um, I think that this is supposed to be like a size difference between the Sun and Arcturus, but we can we can have a little look. Uh, we can have a little look. How far is Arcturus away? Because I don't know. Uh, uh, oh well, eleven parsecs. <laughs> You you like for for some of the close by stars, especially the large ones. You could get some sort of uh, uh, structure, like definitely not as detailed as that, but you could get a basic idea of structure using interferometry or very very fancy uh, a way of uh, combining different measurements or different observations that you make to get more information than you would out of each of the single uh, observations. But I'm still pretty confident that this is not a real picture and is more like for size comparison purposes. Now that's both out of focus and with very bad seeing. <laughs> Extremely bad seeing, wow! Uh, seeing in astronomy is, is, is what we call atmospheric effects that shift the overall image of the star. I will explain this in a great bit more detail in a just a bit after the video, because I think that this is a very short video, right? And 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 I, and I feel like I could at least make it educational. So I will explain all about seeing that a layman needs to know, so that 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 you can at least take something away from this video that is not flat earthers are wrong. But I mean, of course, they are wrong. Sure, let's impose our uh, chosen religion on, on, on findings in nature. That's always a cracking idea, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, what, what you can see here is speckling. And, and, and you can even see that, uh, if you think about it, the airy discs that I will explain in, also in a bit. Very bad speckling. <laughs> This is what happens if you if you take pictures of astronomical objects that are either too far zoomed in when you essentially just zoom in on the atmosphere, or when you when you uh, have really bad conditions like a lot of moisture in the air, uh, uh, a lot of different temperature layers, and things like that. Here you can see some artifacts from the from the camera that this was made with because like th this stays more or less consistent that you have like two uh, uh, main columns right here maybe a third one right here and and then these these almost like th this almost looks like a diffraction pattern to me this has been uh, uh, done with some optical sensor that is not made specifically for astronomy which is fine you know this could be a phone sensor this could be some uh, uh, not extremely expensive astronomical camera or like a normal camera with a telefocal lens, te telefocus lens on it. But uh, uh, th this is what you get then when you zoom too far in. Also, I don't think that this is quite in focus, but I could be wrong. I see a star that is partially out of focus and affected by very, very bad seeing conditions. 
<laughs> and I should know. <laughs> Although I, I, I usually do radio astronomy, so we, we, we don't get that bad effects there. More of the same! Of course, that's of course it's purpose. No nothing else, totally, of course. <sighs> that's very personal information. <laughs> ah, ah, of course, okay, yeah, sure. He, he has to plug his, his weird app, of course. Uh, no, 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 no surprises there. You know, I, I, I love when they do the same argument with, with planets. I absolutely love it. Because they say, oh, you can't take pictures of planets. And, and yet, if you focus them properly and you have not shit conditions, you actually can. I did it with my 30 euro telescope that I just held my my phone onto. When you pick reasonable settings, I, I if I can remember, I will put them up right here. Exactly! Learn the truth, and that is what I'm trying to convey here. So I will now go into a more detailed explanation of what you're seeing and why you're seeing it. After I finish the video, but I don't think that... Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's just ads for the, for the app. So, let's go into uh, my OneNote explanation thing. Okay, so here we are back uh, at my... Uh, one note explanation sheet that I had to start at a second one for <laughs> explanation two because I I uh, have completed the first one like so, so much so that my input device because I'm using an, an Android tablet to write uh, starts lagging when I write things and I don't like lagging. Okay, so why do we see stars like that? First of all, he here's a, a scheme of what's going on. Here's some sort of star depicted as a star. <laughs> Here's Olaf with a, a comically drawn telescope. I'm, I'm actually, th th this is one of my better drawings. Please don't, you know, I'm, I'm bad at drawing. Um, and here is some air in between me and the star. Not important where it is exactly, but it is in between. That's, that's, that's what, what, what is important. So what happens is that the light from the star that through space travels largely undisturbed unless it, 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 it goes through some, some sort of nebula or, or a small molecular cloud or something of the sort, um, and then it, 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 it hits air. And one of the things, or like the atmosphere, and one of the things that you can think of as air is like you have many different layers of densities because they, they have uh, different, the, the layers of air have different temperatures. Not much, but still enough. Right, uh, so, some of this air is rising from from the earth, going up. Some is uh, cooling off and going down. Some may have some moisture in it. Some won't have moisture in it, and all of that is mixed up. And so, what you get, uh, it, it is in astronomy usually depicted as, as little bubbles. It's of course not bubbles. It's more like layers, but bubbles are easier to draw. And what happens is, uh, the light has a different uh, index of refraction in each and every one of these these air packets, if you want to call them like that, and and then what happens? Well, obviously uh, uh, refraction occurs, right? This is of course exaggerated. It's not going to be that bad as I draw it right here, but but it's going to be noticeable. Um, an alternative approach that some people like better, I like the first one better, but you know, to each their own. Um, an alternative approach is with wave fronts. Imagine that you have all these nice and parallel wave fronts coming in from the star. Then it hits the, the air packets, and, it, and as I said, it has a different index of refraction in each of these air packets. And so afterwards, they will look distorted like that. And so, so what effects can this have? Now, please note that, that this is for, for lay people. This is not for professionals. There are a lot more effects that I could have listed. There are a lot more uh, details that I, that I just picked out. This is just for, for the everyday person who is a bit interested in astronomy and somehow has stumbled, or stumbled over my videos. So all four of you, <laughs> hi, um, this video is for you. Um, so yeah, let's 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 have a look. Uh, in, in in astronomy, all of these effects are usually categorized and and like uh, brought under one roof by the name seeing. Ta-da! It's called seeing. 
because astronomers aren't creative people. And seeing actually refers to different effects, but usually astronomers are lazy and will call each and every one of those seeing. And we even call the the size of, of what we see seeing sometimes. I will come to that in the end. So the first effect that I'd like to talk about is scintillation. Uh, scintillation occurs when light passes through these, these air uh, layers. And if you look at it like for a very short time, we saw scintillation plenty in the video. Uh, this looks like sudden changes in brightness, position and color. Color because uh, how much something is refracted actually depends on the wavelength. So you will see, depending on where you are, uh, you will see different colors than someone who, who is observing the same object a couple of meters away from you. Uh, oops, sorry, I bumped my microphone. Um, you will see all of these changes, and these are just due to the changes in the uh, homogeneity of the medium, right? So essentially, you, you can easily see how, how it changes uh, position, right? Like, the, the, this is easy. If, if uh, suddenly if, if a pocket of air uh, deflects the light into a certain direction, it looks like the star has moved a tiny bit, right? Um, the same goes for brightness, of course, if, if a lot of light is being uh, deflected away from you, it may look as if the, the, the star has gone dimmer all of a sort. Uh, and the fir third thing is color, again, due to the dependence of on wavelength of refraction. Okay, second effect is if you have scintillation going on, and you have, if you look at some objects through the atmosphere, in with, with an optical telescope, that is. Um, if you have long exposure times, all of these effects are going to add up, and it's just going to create a blurry disk. Now imagine that this gray one right here was the original position of the stars, and over time, you you uh, you see uh, uh, the, the, the star starts to wobble around. And long exposure time means that, you know, if you expose your, your, your camera sensor for a long time, it will add up all of these individual images. And what you get is you will get a blurry, this is my attempt of drawing something that's blurry when you just have a monochromatic thing. I, I apologize, but I can't do any better than that. It looks really weird and hairy. <laughs> um, not the best artist, I guess. So what it does, it creates a disk that is blurry, right? Uh, and the center of the disk, it's usually the brightest because that's where, on average, most of the scintilla scintillation effects will, will, will add up to. And the further you go out, the, the worse it is. And this blurry disk has a characteristic size. And depending on this characteristic size, you can classify how good or bad your seeing in astronomy is. And this is what we call a seeing disk. So if, if, if someone comes to you and says, today I had a seeing of one uh, arc second, that's really good. That's really good. That's a nice place to have astronomical observations. Very good. Um, by the way, professional observation spots are picked with like, I think 0 0.4 arc seconds. So a lot better than that. Um, so for, for your everyday ast uh, hobby astronomer, uh, one arc second will be good. Three will be pretty bad. And anything below four is, is extremely bad. We, we had, um, when, when, when we did our astronomical observation, uh, uh, you know, hands-on session at the university, we, we had three of those. Um, we, what you did is you would calibrate your instrument and then you would do a seeing analysis where, where you have a look with long exposure time and then you can measure the, the, the size, the angular size of, 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 the, of an airy disk, right? Um, and, but by the way, it's, it's called airy disk. I, I wrote blurry disk here. Both of these names are correct. And, and the size of our airy disk was a whopping 3.6 arc seconds. And so we wrote that down. And when we came back two weeks later for the second part of the, of the uh, I think it was two weeks, yeah, for, for the second part of the observation rounds, uh, someone drew a sad smiley next to, next to our like 3.6 arc seconds uh, a note. So yeah, that's really bad. Um, either way. The third effect that you can see are speckles, which turns the original signal into a discontinued pattern. You could see this in the video nicely. You know, usually um, point sources, so like a star, you would only see a star as one point. But 
of course, we don't see points because diffraction is a thing. We see them as as diffraction patterns, right? So the thing is, if if the the signal of such a diffraction pattern hits the the atmosphere, it can happen that it is divided in such a way that there are, it seems as if this light actually comes from a whole cluster of small things. Those are called speckles. And all of these effects just come from the atmosphere. I have listed a fourth effect, which is flat earthers being a bit stupid. Uh, if you don't focus your camera, well, it's going to look quite shit. <laughs> um, so if you if you have the, the light coming in, and this is the, the lens, and you don't focus it properly, the image will be bigger and very, very bad. And this is what you see sometimes with, with flat earth observations. Again, if I, if I remember, I put my, my own observations of um, Saturn and, and Jupiter uh, at the front of the, of the video or like at, at the earlier part of the video that were just achieved with a very cheap telescope that I found at the flea market. It cost me 30 euros. I looked it up that the, the new price is like, it was 100 euros. It's now like 60 to 70 euros. And it's for, for that price, it's actually really good. I, I, I can recommend that if you're just getting into astronomy and which I held my phone up to. That's it. That's like all the high tech you need. That I mean, come on. Um, so the resume here is that we really should expect to see seeing effects. Now, with some of the pictures that NASA shows you or that, 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 that you see from the European Space Agency or any scientific uh, agency or publication, really, uh, the pictures look amazing. This is because, first of all, our equipment costs hundreds of thousands of euros, if not sometimes millions. The telescope that we use at our university has cost the university 300,000 euros. And that was like in 90, 1990s money or something. So it's, it's, it's quite a bit more now. And even ours has these effects. You, you just develop tools to get around them. Some of the possible solutions and tools are, first of all, space telescopes, because they don't have to look through the atmosphere. Um, you can do multiple observations of the same object and, 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 and hope that you get one where the seeing effects are minimal. You can stack multiple observa observations on top of each other in the hopes that, that uh, the bad effects will cancel out on average. You can pick a better location. For example, if you have an average seeing disk of like four arc seconds where you are, your pictures will look way, way worse than if you uh, pick them, for example, in Chile. Chile is chosen for a lot of uh, uh, telescope locations precisely because it has, it has such amazing seeing uh, uh, probability uh, 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 properties down there, right? Um, third way you can get a, a fourth way you can get around is interferometry. Um, interferometry is really really useful because you by default observe from multiple different positions and you use some very, very fancy math to pretend as if your telescope was as big as the distance between your two single telescopes, which is really, really fancy and requires a lot of precise measurements, but this can help remove atmospheric effects. Um, you can pick less sensitive wavelengths. For example, you can go into radio astronomy where the atmosphere uh, really doesn't give a shit about your uh, radio waves if you are above a certain sea height, for example, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, ALMA, um, is at about 500 meters above mean sea level, precisely because the atmosphere up there has extremely little effect on, on radio observations. So it is ideal to have a look at, at uh, stars or anything, galaxies that you would like to have a look at from up there. And the, 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 fur, the, the last way is adaptive and active optics, which is where you change the shape of your mirror depending on how the seeing at your location is at the time. Uh, that this is adaptive optics and active optics actually change not only during a calibration, but also during the actual observations at like every moment they, they, they adapt, which is really, really expensive. <laughs> um, the extremely large telescope that is being constructed right now actually is doing both of these, which is amazing. But I think I've talked now for long enough. I hope you did learn something about this and you now know what the effects of seeing are and why we, why they are a thing. If you learned something and if you enjoyed what I talked about today, then I would absolutely love for you to consider liking and uh, it would make my day if you left me one of these little subs uh, or at least consider doing so. Um, 
yeah, I think that was it. I wish you a very nice week and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!